Hey guys, Iggy here. It's a beautiful day in New Hampshire, and um, I did something. The Escalade is gone. I was, uh, I've had it for a year and a half, two years, and I'm like, you know what? It's time. I want something else, even though I rebuilt the motor and I pulled it. And, you know, it's, it was a 2007 with 190,000 on it, you know, so it was getting up there. And I uh, was driving around, and Angela and I, we found a dealership that had some pretty nice stuff. And, well, say hello to my 2018 Dodge Ram 1500 Blackout Edition with uh, the 5.7 Hemi. It's pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. The interior is absolutely just real quick. I have a blanket in here because we are going to be uh, tinting it real quick. So, uh, we'll, technically right now, we're just going to do a windshield strip. Uh, I have tint on order. Um, if you didn't know, or if you do know, whatever you want to say, I'm a jack of all trades. I like to learn something new every year. So, like six years ago, seven years ago, something like that, I wanted to learn something new. So, I learned how to tint windows. Uh, I think this road, I'm pretty sure this is one of my first tint jobs. And uh, this was a long, long time ago. I've learned new, new techniques, I've learned new ways to do things. and. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to peel it all. Plus, I want to go darker. So, uh, here in New Hampshire, tint is perfectly legal. Um, six inches on the windshield or to the AS1 line. And you need a waiver to do the fronts. But nobody ever listens to that. But I also have a waiver. So, I got the fronts. They're going to be 20. And the backs, I'm doing 20 over the factory tint. So, and along with the, the absolute rear window. But I'm going to show you a couple little things on a uh, little, little tricks on how to do this. It's, it's a quick money maker. You know, maybe it will take you... 40 minutes, half hour or so, you know, depending on how fast you go. But you need a spray bottle, a light, a squeegee, a blue Brillo pad, has to be blue, a razor, and then the tint. This is the tint I get. It's um, Gila, or Hilla is actually how they pronounce it. Get it at AutoZone. Uh, that's literally all you will need. Um, you can use a heat gun. You don't have to. Um, because it's going to bake in the sun for a little bit and we're actually not going to touch it. So, uh, I might pull the heat gun out later. I might not. We'll see. But just a six inch one right here. It is going to be a two piece only because we got this massive stuff and I don't feel like taking it apart. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, trace it around that and we're just going to stop it. Stop it right here behind the dot matrix. Pretty easy for you. And, uh, you know, honestly it costs like 16, 18 dollars for one package of this and they're six inch strips so you don't have to cut it or anything like that uh, unless you trim it to the top um but you're talking 20 bucks so we'll say 20 bucks and you could do five cars from it and i used to charge 20 dollars a strip so you know i made a hundred dollars profit off of that and it didn't take long at all so that's that's a quick money maker if you have the the time and patience to do something like that and if you're a kydex holster maker like i am you have the patience um, I'm not saying tint is easy to work with. It's a little windy out. My garage is full, so I'm not going to use that. My dogs are chasing after each other. They're having fun. But anyways, so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, show you how to do this. So start off by taking your light. This guy. You could be uh, whatever you want. You know, I have a, this, these drop-down lights for my mechanic stuff. Uh, you could also use a flashlight you with a second person, uh, but you definitely need a light on the inside if the tint is really dark. Uh, Dawn dish soap and water. So that's all it is. So we're going to have to get the crap off of this. And that's what the grill is for. You can use a razor. Might have to pull the razor because there's sap on here. It looks like it came off. The blue Brillo pad is perfectly safe for a glass and paint. It will not scratch it, which is the reason why we use it. And don't just um, wipe it with a rag. This is what I personally do. I take the squeegee, start at one end. Then I'll take my rag. Okay. So now, I like to be thorough. 
Do it again. Given the outside isn't the main focus for the cleaning, because the tent goes on the inside. My dogs are having a ball. Hey! Okay. So that's good. Let's grab the tent. And what you want to do is you want to check to see which side is the peelable side and which side is the tent. All right, so clear side is on this side. And what you want to do is you want clear, clear side up. So we're going to go just like this. Lay it down with the soapy water. Lay your tint down. Doesn't matter right now. And then anchor it in place with your squeegee. And that's just by doing that. Now we're going to take our razor. Cut it, and then take the rest of your tent, put it away. All right, so now you want to find your dot matrix, make sure you're above it, and set it up in the position you want it. Take your squeegee, start in the middle, and work your way out. But actually, it looks like it's smoothing out now. Yep, it's actually smoothed out. Cool. All right. So at this point, take your light, turn it on. just saw that I actually need to go this way um, just a little bit so we'll have to reposition this and this is why you overcut it and then it, it should with a little due diligence it should slide to yep where you want it and then when it's up go ahead respray it Go inside, check the position again. And now we're going to go ahead and do the inside. Our tools. I have a sticker here that's for your oil change. Pull that off. And we will relocate that 
later on, so we'll stick it in the back for now. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead with my mirror. And it's just soapy water, so it's not gonna destroy anything. Go ahead, clean where your tint is. And you want to you don't want to go like left then right you want to do everything to one side so we are going to start from right and go left probably be easier to go left to right i'll do that in the next one all right and then spray it again like i said i like to do this part twice because can't be you know too clean with this It'd be ideal to do this in a garage if you live in a dusty area. I live in a dusty area. I live on a dirt road, so, but it's a dead end, so not a lot of people drive down it. Uh, unless you live here, that's about it. So, we'll go ahead and clear this. All right, we still need to trace it. So we'll go ahead and do that, which is the reason why I had that out. But in all technicality, I could just slide the tint over and then just do it in here. So, but we're going to cut it on this side and make sure it's good. And then uh, go from there. So what we're going to do, just get that damp. Get a razor. Separate the plastic protector as soon as you get it folded over, spray it. That way it doesn't stick to itself and dirt won't travel on it from your hands so spray it as you release and don't let the tint touch itself then stuff out of the way spray it one more time take your tint do not let it touch anything bunch it up and put it where you need it is right there like that. spray the outside and then we're going to tack it check your areas and then go ahead and get the rest of your interior wet <laughs>
and this is where the heat gun would help you get the glue to stick and then do not touch it for a few days let it bake in the sun and then go ahead and clean the rest you can tell from the sound I had to get the heat gun out but there is one side there's my pain in the butt dogs but anyways let's get a step stool here all right so a lot of times around the dot matrix you'll get this right here and uh, that will go away uh, as the Sun cooks it you can see it's over there too as the Sun cooks it the water that's underneath will evaporate and it'll be gone so for now there's half done and I didn't feel like taking everything off so maybe a getaway around it but I'd rather do two pieces and then take everything off and risk breaking something plastic and I'll go ahead and do this side as well
the way you saw me do it before was one particular way to peel the um, transfer paper and get the tint on there. Um, that's all well and dandy, but it's more dangerous for fingerprints and uh, dirt and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is get all my material inside now. And we're going to lay this in here because it is, it is pretty windy. We're going to protect yourself from that wind. Let's see. Go ahead. Take your Brillo pad. Out of the way. Oh, see, I got more stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut around that. I'll do that in, when this is in here. Okay. Now, generally, it depends on state to state, but you're allowed six inches or to the AS1 line. If you don't know what the AS1 line, it is a line that is in the manufacturer's um, windshield. It's usually, it has a line that says A down arrow S1. And uh, generally it can be on both sides. Uh, a lot of times I've noticed it's now only on one side of the car. So it is right here. That was one clean. And we're gonna go ahead and do this again. There it is. Just like I said, I like to rather do this part twice. And you really should cut out everything you need on the outside, but we're going to do it on the inside. I'm going to show you how to do that. smudge right there that smudge will will show up All right. okay so what we'll do now again just get it wet we're gonna turn to this so I know that let's see here where's this just go ahead get that transfer Touch only the corner and peel back some of that. Roughly half or so. I mean, you can obviously do as much as you feel comfortable with. All right. And then grab the end that's not taken down, pick it up, and without touching anything, get it up there like so all right and then what you do is you take the rest of it off spray that and then put that on We're gonna have to cut here. So what we'll do is we'll get squeegee and tack this in place. And then get your very sharp blade. And cut along what you're doing. Okay. 
so. And then we're actually going to reposition this. This is going to go higher up. And another tip is you do not want to do this on a uh, on a hot day. Because what will happen is the water will and soap will evaporate almost instantly. And then you won't be able to move anything. Spray this, put this part down. And then we'll move it this way. And that piece that we're trying to get in here, we'll go ahead and fix that. And that's not going in. You want to get like the noodle wrinkle effect, but don't focus on it too long and keep your patience on it because eventually, ha, that's why you got to keep it. That's why you have to keep this uh, lubed, but it ended up creasing. So, so now that piece is junk. And We'll have to do it again. Hate when that happens, but it's all part of the game. Well, I am a dumbass. So, you just saw me crinkle that piece of uh, tint. Now, lo and behold, that was the last piece, piece, the last piece of tint that I had. So now, I am currently going to uh, AutoZone. Now, in my town, I am minimum a half hour from anything cool. I'm not saying AutoZone is cool because it's not, but they have some stuff. Now I gotta say, uh, when I bought the Roadrunner 11 years ago, I got a job at AutoZone. I was the manager of AutoZone, and the only reason why I did it was, ready for this? To buy parts for the Roadrunner. And it worked. I ended up being there like three years. I, like I said, I was manager. Uh, it was a hub, so I had a whole bunch of access to parts, discounts, 30% off some weekends, 40% off. So I'm like, you know what? It worked. And, uh, you know, there's some stories where I've kicked people out of AutoZone because they just weren't listening. There's stories where, you know, we had car shows in the parking lot. I even built an AR-15 in the back of AutoZone. So, but get this. One day, uh, I was off the clock and I was rebuilding a Chevy Blazer and I had to go in for parts. I had five, six hundred dollars on me and I had my uh, FNX 45 Tactical. Uh, you know, it's a, the largest capacity 45 on the market. I had it. Obviously, I'm a holster maker, so uh, I had it in its holster. I had it on my side. I was not in uniform. I walked in and uh, they're like, yep, they put me on administrative leave for having a firearm on the premises. And the fact I had the firearm, I was putting in danger, uh, the employees and the customers. And I ended up uh, pretty much at the end, I was like, you know what, go F yourself. I'm all set guys. And I, uh, I walked away. So after I walked away, I got a call from um, the district manager and it was like three weeks, four weeks ago. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna have to let you go. And I'm like, why are you calling me? Cause I quit, you know, however long ago it was. And then uh, we just kind of like, okay, well, talk to you later. Uh, sure enough, uh, I went to go open up a um, commercial account so I could go ahead and have parts delivered to me and start my, uh, you know, mechanics and all that stuff out of my old garage and uh, my old shop. And uh, they're like, yeah, we don't want to do business with you or people like you because we you left on bad terms. I'm like, because I have guns. So AutoZone is extremely um, anti-gun. And it's actually kind of funny because there was one story where down south, I think it was South Carolina, a uh, 
AutoZone got robbed and the manager ran out to his car, grabbed a gun, and held the gunman at gunpoint. Figure that one out. Either he had a knife or something. But anyways, the robber, uh, he held him at gunpoint until the police arrived. The next day, AutoZone fired him because he had a firearm on premises. So, yeah. So I kind of stay away from anti-2A stuff and, and whatnot, but... I got my payback on AutoZone. I'm not going to tell you how he did it, but they're really the only ones that carry this tent. And there's no Pep Boys around me. And this is literally like the only auto pot store. There's there's, there's nothing around. So uh, we'll see. But anyways, this is 2018 Ram. Yeah, I'm going a little bit. And this is what we're... I, <laughs> so I got nothing over here. And I have this one. So that is what we... Yes, I know I have my camera going while I'm driving. No, I don't care. Because guess what? We're good. So anyways, uh, yeah, so you're going to see me at AutoZone soon, and hopefully I'll finish this damn tent. And then I'm going to have to do the new Jeep, because I bought a Jeep too. So we'll go from there. Yes. Now I could fix this. E. And there we go. Follow the process again. Got driver's side, passenger side. Got where it is right here. As long as you clear the dot matrix, I think I can focus on that. But as long as you clear, wow, bam. Again, as long as you clear the uh, dot matrix, you are perfectly fine. And you wanna keep it in the sun. So there it is, all said and done. So like I said, keep it in the sun, don't touch it, let it bake. And this little roll of bubbles uh, on the dot matrix will go away on its own. So yeah, that is the quick and easy. But I had a tin of windshield if you don't crinkle it or run out of windshield tin. So have fun, good luck, peace.